Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a webinar. And we would like to welcome you on behalf of Dr. Mark Middleton, owner of the SA Vet Shop Group, and Dr. Ockel Goethe of Vets France, who's also our speaker for tonight. And just general housekeeping before I introduce the speaker, please put your questions in the Q&A section. Uh, Dr. Goethe will answer it after the session. Um, please do that right through the webinar. And um, yeah, please tell us where you're from, a useful chat for that. I would like to draw, introduce Dr. Boerta. He qualified as veterinarian at Unish Support Veterinary Faculty in 1982 and received the prize as top student in his class, as well as receiving the honor of being the best clinical student in his year. Uh, after his military service, he joined Hatfield Burton Animal Hospital where he practiced for 22 years. He always had a, a keen interest in small animal surgery, feline as well as avian and pigeon medicine. During his time at Hatfield, he uh, accepted regular surgical and avian referrals, and later he established Hatfield as a specialist small animal surgical referral practice. He always like to lecture and is very popular as a lecture, lecturer to veterinarians, pigeon and avian fanciers and students, both here and abroad. He also published numerous scientific articles in his area of expertise in the late press uh, as well. And he was co-author of the article on the efficacy of toxicity tablet developed by himself in the SA Vet Journal. He joined NOLA and headed up the Specialist Vet Only Pet Food Division, uh, SVD Ultra Dog. And during his five year, he re established SVD as one of the market leaders in the Vet Only Pet Food. After leaving, or he left Ultra Dog then and established Vet Brands, the world's first Vet, on, vet Only Veterinary Product and Pet Food Company in 2012. Over to you, Dr. Werther. Thank you very, very much, Madeleine. Yes, and um, thank you again for Madeleine and the team that's hosting us tonight. Um, I'd like to welcome, it's absolutely an incredible honor to welcome all pet lovers here tonight. I know that it's in the evening and a lot of people have a lot of things to do. So having you here is a true honor and I really hope that tonight I'll be able to give a little bit of practical information um, on the feeding of pets, um, we're going to specifically be focusing primarily on dogs. Um, and this will be an ongoing webinar type of um, um, th that we'll be doing in time. So over the next few months, we'll be doing more of these in the sense of large animal, um, large dog um, nutrition, cat nutrition. So it's a whole little range of webinars that we've decided to do to inform pet om owners in South Africa and hopefully all over the world um, and to inform them on how to get a better understanding of what the optimal feeding of their pet is. And I think tonight that's very important. We're looking specifically at the optimal feeding of pets and very specifically then, as I said, on in dogs. I'm not going to be discussing tonight the best pet nutrition and I'm not going to be concerning myself at all with a low, lower type value um, pet nutrition, dog nutrition. What I'd like to make very clear is that there is an optimal type of food that you can give your dog that will fit in well within your constraints of, of finances, within your constraints of, of pet owner per se. And that's what I'd like to elucidate tonight. I'd like to make it very clear what you as pet owner should do to try and find out along with the help of your nutritionist, being it the person that's helping you at the vet shop or your veterinarian, what the best um, food is for your dog that you can afford and that would be give that dog the best quality of life long term. So we say they are what they eat and emphatically there is no truer word than that. Um, everything that a dog eats in the end of the day will play a major role in its quality of life, in what it looks like, in its um, joy and the way that it actually acts as a pet and gives you all the joy and love and affection that, that, that only dogs can do. So they are what they eat, whether they emaciate it from being underfed or whether they fat and obese from being overfed. And none of these are what we want. We want the dog to be in optimal health and optimal condition. And we need to go right back to, uh, to the roots and say what they eat is what will actually be, be giving us that optimal um, nutrition. 
So again, saying we don't want the thin or the fat dog. We want a sleek looking dog um, with a shining coat and a very good way of actually establishing in smooth haired dogs, whether your dog is at the right weight is to actually be able to see the last two or three ribs, preferably the last two ribs. So a dog should never be obese and a dog in good health and good body condition, we talk about different body scores, should have the two last ribs visual, visible. And then we know that dog is on the optimal plane of nutrition. A very, very important parameter of what the dog's health is and what the dog is actually taking in his food is the skin coat and health. It is an absolutely incredible amount of dogs that we see in veterinary practice where the skin health and the skin coat and the, um, the health of the of the um, um, hair itself actually um, shows us very, very clearly whether that dog is on its optimal um, nutritional plane and whether that dog, again, is taking the correct food. Because sometimes what is optimal may not be the ideal food in the sense of what the dog is taking regarding allergens and skin allergies and things like that. So we're looking for health, happiness, and long longevity. And there are really one major, there's one major factor that will give us this health, happiness, and longevity, and that is what we are going to be feeding that dog. There is no doubt that since the super premium dog foods have come onto the market three, 40 years, 30, 40 years ago, that the dog's life expectancies have, have increased by around about 20 to 30%. So in the olden days, when we fed homemade foods, or when we fed the lower quality dog meal that was available in those days, and the dog's life expectancies were around about 10, 12 years. We know now that the older, that the smaller breed dogs can go up to 17, 18, 19 years of age, and the larger breed dogs easily up to 13, 14, 15, 15. So we're not only getting a longer time with this beloved pet of ours, but that beloved pet of ours will have a longer time of joy and happiness and health. So that is what we will be aiming for tonight, is to give you a background on what the scenario is regarding what is the optimal type of food. So I want to always just use this analogy of cost versus quality in dog food as well. And I take it back to two things, and that being wine. Um, and I always say that there's very, very seldom that you can buy a really good wine, a very good tasty wine at a very low price, a 20 Rand bottle of wine. That really just doesn't exist. And emphatically, I can say that that's exactly the same in, in the dog food scenario. You cannot, cannot ever buy a dog food that costs 50 Rand a bag of eight kilograms or 70 Rand a bag of eight kilograms and think that you're feeding the dog the optimal nutrition. Yes, the dog will survive exactly like you can use that little mini Cooper of 30 years ago, you can still travel for, with that little Mini Cooper down to Cape Town, but you'll have a far safer, far um, more joy, joyful ride if you go into the new Mini Cooper and the, and the new, new technology type of um, vehicle. So dog food and vehicles and red wine is very much the same. You get what you pay for. Yes, sometimes you do get a scenario where you can get an excellent quality dog food at a better price. And hopefully we'll be able to show you tonight that that is actually possible. But do not go out there and try and think that you're gonna buy a cheap and low um, cost um, dog food and that think that that'll be optimal nutrition. And I want to reiterate again, that you may be able to actually get that cheaper dog food and that you may be able to feed that dog food to your dog and that the dog will survive and the dog will ostentatiously look good. It'll still look okay. But there are many, many factors that you cannot see within the dog's body score, within the dog's um, health, within the dog's um, kidney and liver and all the heart um, conditions that you cannot pick up. So a, a healthy looking dog that's doing well on a cheap dog food will definitely in time develop deficiencies, will develop all manner of early disease, will develop all manner of um, things that, that will cause a shorter longevity in that dog. So let's have a look at pet food quality. And, and it's really important for me tonight to try and break down for everybody how we evaluate pet food. It's so, so difficult for you as a pet owner and even for the, the um, ladies and the, our um, food ambassadors that work in the pet, pet shops or um, in the veterinary clinics to actually know how we evaluate a dog food. And uh, for, to me, tonight's lecture 
the most important factor that I'd want to um, convey is how do we evaluate pet food quality? So essentially, there are a few um, different things that we have to take into account. Number one is the formulation of the pet food quality. So if we go back and we look at that slide, you see that we look at formulation, the raw materials that we're going to be using in the pet food, the additives, which has become very, very specialized, and then the quality and reliability of the manufacturer. So I'm going to go through each of those four, four um, points very briefly and try and elucidate to you guys how we evaluate a high quality pet food that is still affordable. So on formulation, it's hugely import, imp, um, important to understand that most people that are slightly informed will look at the percentage or gram per kilogram of the raw materials that in, is that in that food. In other words, they'll say, if you've got a dog food that's got a 23% protein, it's got to be better than a dog food that's got an 18% protein or a 20% protein. And the same with the fat and the starch. But that is definitively not what you want to be looking at. You do not want to look at the percentage or the gram per kilogram. So what do we look for when reading the ingredients in dog food? You can see that little slide and you can see that when you look at the back of a bag of dog food, it's really, really confusing. You get this multitude of things sitting there and in the end, the, the whole, all the writing starts blurring in front of your face and you don't really look, know what to look at. But I want to ask you tonight, when you're looking at the back of the, of the bag, look at two things and two things alone. So the guaranteed analysis and the ingredients list. Those are the two things that you can focus on that with one cursory look at that bag, you can get an idea. So the guaranteed analysis, we said, do not just look at the percentage. That gives you an indication, but you've got to be very, very careful in saying that a 20% protein is worse than a 27% protein. So that's your first thing you look at. You don't want something with a 15% protein and a fat content of 8% or 7% ridiculously low. So you can always use that as your starting point to compare one food with the other, but do not go by the price of, uh, alone. It's very easy to assume that the most expensive dog food is the higher quality of ingredients. This is definitively not always the case. Instead, you want to look at the label closely and examine the ingredients listed and not the price tag. So hugely important and by far the most important for you as pet owner to look at is this ingredients list. So we've got to know what we've got to look at at this ingredients list. And essentially that ingredients list I'm going to take you back to there. You'll see that it lists all of the dis different ingredients. In other words, what is the, the recipe that this dog food is made from? And by law in South Africa and, and some other countries, those have to be listed in descending order by weight or by percentage. In other words, let's say grain is listed first, then we know that that is the highest percentage of the food is made up of grain. Each ingredient must be listed individually. Now, that is a really, really important um, aspect because we'll look later on when people use this individual listing of the ingredients and how they actually crook um, the consumer, how they actually um, confuse the consumer into thinking that the dog food is actually better than it is. Terms that in collectible ingredients such as animal products is not allowed protein products is not an ingredient must be listed by their common name. So you, the, the, um, the pet owner should actually be able to interpret what is in that list itself. So then I just want to very briefly try and explain what we call ingredient splitting. Um, essentially what happens is that people will often take the starch source and break that starch source into three or four different sources of starch. So barley in that case, brown rice and brewer's rice, although they actually together should be known as grain and should be listed as grain, they break them up into these small segments and that gives them the, the opportunity to actually list chicken meal or chicken as the first ingredient. And that is definitively not the case. The chicken meal and chicken is actually less. So the protein is then less than the starch source. So it's very important when you look at these um, basic ingredients that you understand when they're listing three or four different starch sources, they're doing that because of the fact that they want to have those starch sources listed below the chicken meal and chicken to make us believe that the chicken meal and chicken is basically the primary source. 
So again, we're then going to look at raw materials. And I think when I explain a little bit further, you'll understand why people do this protein splitting on uh, ingredient splitting. So on the raw materials, we want to look specifically, and I want to just use the four main raw materials tonight. We look at protein, starch, fat, and fiber, or starch being carbohydrates. So protein, starch, fat, and fiber. And I always use the acronym PSFF, protein, starch, fat, and fiber. So whenever you're looking at a dog food, if you've carefully examined what is in that dog food of the protein, starch, fat, and fiber, you suddenly the light goes on and you then can make a decision whether this is a high quality food or whether it's a lower quality cheap type of food. So there's a tremendous amount of different sources of protein that dogs can actually use. Um, that's just a ganogram or sort of a, 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 a drawing of the types of proteins we can have in dog food. But essentially we want to break them down into animal protein and plant protein. And that's very, very important to understand that a dog and even more so a cat is what we call carnivores and true carnivores. And they really do not use plant proteins well or at all. So whatever dog food you're going to be looking at, it immediately distinguishes the cheap and nasty dog food, which uses a lot of pro plant proteins from the higher quality proteins where we use only animal proteins and declare only the animal protein source as the source of the protein in that dog food and use only that. So on the animal protein side, we now know we don't want um, plant proteins, we want only animal proteins. Now it becomes very, very important to understand what type of animal protein we're going to be using. And there it's so important to differentiate between what I call carcass meal and versus protein meal. And maybe I must just step back a little bit and say, remember that it's very, very difficult, if not impossible, to use fresh meat in dry dog food because fresh meat is made up of 70% water and 30% protein. So when you put fresh meat in, you really can't put enough fresh meat. So there is no diet that's got only fresh meat. The diets all use the protein meal. So that protein, the meat itself, is basically dehydrated and boiled. And they basically make a very high quality meal out of it, which you can then put through the cooking process, the extrusion process that we use to make dry dog food. And that will give us the protein source within this dry dog food. What is carcass meal? Carcass meal basically refers to the worst of the worst of the offal, of the hide, of the bone, of the blood. So the whole carcass that is not used for human consumption, these really nasty things go into carcass meal. And in South Africa, unfortunately, we have very, very few high quality protein meal uh, manufacturers and renderers. So we basically, in a high quality dog food, are absolutely forced to use an imported protein meal. So a high quality imported protein meal is what you want to have in your dog food and definitively not a carcass meal. Okay, so there you can see the carcass meal compared to an imported protein uh, meat meal. The completely different look and feel. It's a much finer product. It contains really the higher quality meats itself that has been dehydrated. Okay, so what is the best sources of protein for dogs? So well, now we know that we want to use animal protein. We know we want to use poultry protein meal, high quality protein meal. Now we ask ourselves, what is the best protein meal? And by far whole eggs, which we cannot use purely as a result of the fact that in South Africa, it's not a, an affordable protein source and the fact that it actually doesn't extrude that well. So as an adjunct, as an add to a high quality dog food, and we'll touch upon that a little bit later, whole eggs is a good protein source. But chicken and turkey is by far the best, chicken, uh, best protein source that we can feed for dogs in the general sense, in the general type of proteins that we're using. We're not lose, looking at the extremely ex expensive sources like the salmon um, protein meal, or um, deep sea fish protein meal, but chicken and turkey is definitively better than, than bovine, in other words, cattle or sheep or um, porcine meal. So whenever you're looking at a dog food, 
Let's look and see whether you can get chicken or turkey as the source of the protein meal. It will list it very clearly as chicken meal or turkey meal. And that is what you want to be looking at in your high quality dog foods that's not completely off the scale price wise. Okay, so let's look very briefly on, at plant, plant proteins. We said we don't want plant protein. The inside of the maize, of the maize um, kernel, oh, not the kernel, the maize seed itself, contains a thing called corn gluten, and that is a plant protein. And some um, dog foods will include a high percentage of corn gluten. So if you see this word corn gluten or gluten high up in the ingredients list, you'd want to stay away from that dog food because it's a protein source that, again, the dog can't use well. But it's a cheap and affordable protein source. So we don't want corn gluten. And definitive, you want absolutely no soya in your dog food. Dogs really cannot um, digest so, to, so soya well. There's a whole lot of other factors in soya that can cause problems. So we want to say emphatically that where humans can use soya as an alternative protein source, definitely not dogs and cats. So look again, if you see soya in a dog food, it's a total no-no. You don't want to use them. Okay. So we've covered the protein sources very well then. We've said we don't want plant proteins. We want animal proteins. We've said we want chicken or turkey protein. And we've said, said we want imported poultry or chicken meal. So imported um, protein meal and not carcass meal. So I think that makes that part very, very clear. Then we want to look at the starch source. We said, let's have a look at carbohydrates. And again, if you look at the sources of carbohydrates in humans, it's a multitude of different things that we can take in as humans in our human daily food. But in dogs, it's a far smaller percentage. So essentially, all carbohydrates are either grain, so that it would be maize or wheat or barley, or and the other source is rice. And the third main source would then be potato or um, sweet potato. So those are our sources of carbohydrates in dogs. And again, I'm going to talk specifically on the premium, super premium range of dog foods. The more rice you have in your dog food and the less maize and the less um, of the, of the um, wheat, the other carbohydrate sources, the grain sources, the less grain you have and the more rice, the better quality dog food because dogs di digest rice, boiled rice, which is um, the end product of the dog kernel. They digest that far better than they digest any of the grains. And in America, there's now a completely big move. It's incredible if you go into the American pet stores, um, you will find 70% of all dog foods in America are grain free. In other words, they put absolutely no grain into their dog food. The jury is out on that, and there are a lot of people that are saying that it shouldn't be, the dog should have some form of grain, but primarily if you can include the highest inclusion of rice, that dog food gives you the best quality dog food on a basis of allergies and on a basis of digestibility of what that dog can use as an energy source. So again, we want to look at a high level of rice inclusion in the food. Okay, so that's the top carbohydrates for dogs, rice, all of the others, and then the sweet, the, 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 the funny ones such as sweet, sweet potatoes, apples and bananas. But effectively in South Africa, we look at rice and then the grains, which is basically maize, and then all of the others which they use in America. Then we're going to look at the fat and the oil coating. And again, this is so incredibly important because this is your marker and this is the, 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 um, act, the ingredient that will determine what the dog's um, skin coat and its hair, hair quality will be among many other things. Many of the hormones are dependent on the fat and the oil that we're going to be giving. The whole, whole metabolism is dependent on that. But primarily, we can see if a dog food has the right fat and oil coating, whether the dog's skin is healthy and whether the, the dog does not develop an allergy. So essentially, we want to use bovine-free oil. By far, there is absolutely no doubt that bovine tallow or the bovine fat is far more allergenic. In other words, it causes far more allergies and it is not as high in DHA, EPA, the good omega-3 um, fatty acids. So we want to use a bovine-free oil, and we want specifically the bovine-free oil to be fortified with cold water fish oil. 
So that cold water fish oil would be salmon oil, um, or it would be the deep sea cold water fish, such as Manhattan and all of the fish that they call catch in Canada, Alaska, all over. These are extremely high in DHA EPA, which we call the omega-3s, they're part of the, part, part of the omega-3s. So we want a high level of omega-3 and we want a lower level of omega-6s. And that gives us a scenario where the dog doesn't have so many allergies. And that's a complete lecture on its own, which I'll be doing in the next few weeks and telling you exactly on what the different oils do. But essentially for now, take my word that fortified cold water fish oil Bovine free is the ideal coating. So a chicken oil that has been fortified with cold water fish oil is what you should be looking for in your high quality dog food. Okay, so there are the different oils and definitively that chicken oil is the ideal and the fresh water fish oils um, supplemented with the fresh water fish oils then. Then lastly, we'll look briefly at the fiber source. Why is fiber important? Because fiber determines it's the natural bowel movement. It has a multitude of other effects on the gastrointestinal tract, on the stomach and intestines. And it's a really, really important raw material and ingredient. And again, if you look at human consumption, we've always just now in this lecture put up the human um, photographs to give you the background of the human consumption. There's a lot of different fiber sources. But in dog food, essentially, we look at wheat bran. In other words, the husk that covers the wheat. So that is the primary source of fiber in South African dog foods. But we know that the beet pulp, which is the other source, is also hugely important and hugely beneficial, especially in puppies and in some of your older breed dogs. So the beet pulp is a second source. So when you're looking again at a dog food analysis, look at the wheat bran and the wheat pulp and the beet pulp. You don't want all of the other lower grade fibers which people sometimes put into the food. So beet pulp is the primary one that we want to be looking for in the specialized diet, specifically puppy and small and large breed puppy, and then in our older, older dogs as well. Okay, so that is a really quick background of dog food, how to interpret dog food, what are the most important things in that dog food. We've touched, we haven't touched on the, uh, the additives and that we'll be talking about very briefly at the end of this when I've taken you through the key benefits of Vets Brands. So we'll store that one until we get to the point where we talk about the Vets Brands products and I'll give you the background of how we integrate those into the dog foods itself. So what are the key benefits of Vets Brands? Essentially, number one, and I think this is a hugely, hugely important benefit that so few pet owners actually appreciate and understand. The fact that this is a true vet-only dog food. It's now the only vet-only dog food in South Africa. And many, many clients and many pet owners come back to us and say, but that's ridiculous. Why would you want to sell your dog food only at vets, veterinarians, practices, or at the vet-owned, controlled, and managed vet shop? And we've made the decision that that is our niche market. That's the market we want to be in because we do continuous training with veterinarians, continuous training with front shop staff, vet, veterinary receptionists, continuous training with the, with the vet shop staff. And I can give you an absolute case in point. You cannot believe how well-trained this SA vet shop group of, of front staff are. We so regularly get them coming back to us and asking us, well, how do we do this? What do we do with us? What is your opinion on this? They really know what they're talking about. When you buy a product at a pet store, pet shop, or you buy the product at a, a supermarket chain or at the co-op or at the, super, or at the uh, butchery, I can promise you that the people that are going to be selling you that product has no or, or very, very little knowledge about dog food, how to interpret dog food and how to give advice on dog food. So we made that decision and said, we want our retailers, which is the veterinarian or the vet shop to be well informed. We want them to be able to come back to myself or our other nutritionists and ask the questions and for us to give the informed answer. So I think that is one of the absolute key benefits of Vets Brands, okay. But there's a whole lot of others. We use exclusively poultry, as we explained, the high quality poultry meal. Some of our um, brand, some of our different the, um, bags, the other food, our foods do have a little bit of porcine meat in. Um, that's a palatability scenario. Some dogs 
pre um, prefer a porcine, a, a, a pig meat. So we have a little bit of, but again, it's imported porcine meat meal. Um, and we have a substantially higher inclusion of rice, less maize, as well as a unique nutraceutical additives. Okay, there's no bovine carcass meal, meat, or tallow in our dog food. And that I think makes a massive, and we not think, we know it makes a massive, massive um, improvement on the amount of dogs that are allergic to vet brands. The allergy ratio in vet brands is much, much lower than it is with even some of the imported super premium type of brands. We use a unique bovine free high DHE and EPA oil and fat, as we've said, again, to give us the optimal skin and, and health luster. And then our kibble size and the unique addition of the specialized nutraceuticals, which we'll be talking about a little bit later. So it's everything that I've told you to interpret. It's plant um, animal protein. It's high quality imported protein. It's poultry primarily by far the major portion 80% of our dog of, um, different brands in the dog food in veg brands is a poultry, imported poultry meal alone, low, lower rice inclusion, high EPA, DHA um, fortified fat and oil that we add over the food. Okay, so if we go very briefly through the different um, SKUs that we've got, it's an adult maintenance and all of those healthy skin and coat, joint support, heart support, immune support, every single thing that I've told you that should be in a high quality, super premium dog food is in adult maintenance dog food. Um, the, if you look at the feeding guidelines of the premium dog foods, you'll see that the top one is basically the top is our dog food is the vets brands adult maintenance the bottom one is an imported brand super premium imported american brand and essentially if you look at those they're exactly the same so same grams per day but you'll pay 40 percent up to 40 percent less for vets brands dog food so it's very very important for every single one of you tonight that is here to understand the terminology and to understand that Vets Brands is not a premium dog food, so it doesn't compete with the other local South African premium brands. It competes with the imported super premium brands. We are on par with the super premium brands, and in some cases here and there, we have some advantages over the super premium brands in both our ingredients list and our formulation. So you really can go out there and buy a local food that is a super premium brand that competes on par with the other imported super premium brands at a 40 to 50% um, less than you'll be paying for those, for those dog foods. And I'm not gonna be taking you through each and every one of them in detail. Essentially our small to medium puppy, we offer a small to medium puppy and a large breed puppy. Emphatically, I'm not even going to debate that. There is no doubt in the world today that you want to feed a small to medium puppy specifically a small to medium puppy pep, um, pellet and, and um, product and a large breed puppy, a large breed um, product. And there's a whole list of different reasons for that. But for now, I'm just going to say that you want a puppy food in the sense of a small to medium breed or a large breed. Our small to medium one uses then imported poultry. We've got higher levels of L-carnitine and that's very, very important because small breed puppies, especially your toys such as the Yorkies, Chihuahuas, the smaller, very small breeds, the toy breeds, they have a very bad way of managing their glucose levels, their sugar levels within their food. And L-carnitine stabilizes those sugar levels. The fact that we're using only um, rice in, the, in that product, not only rice, by far the highest percentage of rice in that product, again, gives us a very stable blood glucose level. And then very importantly, specifically in the small to medium breed puppy and large breed puppy dog food, we add a product called beta glucan, which is a type of fiber, um, but specifically is an immune stimulant. So that beta glucan, and again, it's a full lecture that I can be giving on that, but just for now to say that beta glucan gives you a tremendously better immune system in puppies. So they vaccinate better, they get less um, intestinal disease, the sugar levels stay stable. And then by the addition of the MOS and FOS in the beet, form of beet pulp, that's the good fibers. We stimulate the good bacteria in the intestinal tract. And we don't have this tremendous problem with puppy diarrhea that we so often get when a puppy goes away from its breeder into its new home. 
So an incredibly unique small to medium breed um, food specifically for small to medium puppies. Essentially the same scenario in large breed puppies, but hugely important, and this is so, so, so important for you guys to understand, is that large breed specific puppies, large dogs that grow to larger than 25 to 30 kilogram need emphatically, definitively a large breed puppy food because they have very specific ratios of the calcium to phosphorus. In other words, the amount of calcium to the phosphorus. And then also the energy levels need to be very specific. It's got, in the, I don't, like the large breed puppy, we've got all of the advantages that we've got with a small to medium puppy. But we as a South African company have balanced very, very successfully our large breed puppy for the needs and the growth of um, large breed puppies, specifically in South Africa. If you look at the imported large breed puppy dog foods, they're made primarily for dogs that live in colder environments where they need a higher energy level. So the energy level by way of grain and by way of rice is higher in those foods. And the calcium phosphorus level then often becomes unbalanced. And this is just a case in point of two dogs that I specifically saw with imported dog food at the top quality imported one of the best known imported large breed puppy dog foods. Both of these, the Ridgeback puppy and the Bourbon puppy was on those, that imported dog food. And because of that higher energy level and because of the fact that they consume too much, they develop growth deficiencies. The one, what we call carpal laxity, you can see the bone is bent, um, front legs are bent forward. And the other one, a weakness in his neck where he couldn't walk. And this, um, German, uh, Ridgeback puppy, the only single thing we did with this dog was we changed him from the imported breed um, brand of dog food to Vets Brands um, large breed puppy. And a few months later, a few weeks later, I sent him the WhatsApp you can see there, just wondering how your puppy is doing. Fantastic smiley face. And that is what the dog looked up of, looked like after a few weeks. One of our local residents that just couldn't believe the difference between feeding an imported expensive large breed puppy food and changing over to veg brands large breed puppy and the same holds for this bull and um, we put it on large breed puppy and within a few weeks the weakness in the hind leg legs disappeared and that is a beautiful large strapping beautiful adult dog today on veg brands at a large breed puppy on the senior dog food we have an incredible formulation. We have joint support, glucosamine, and grip lip muscle. We have very, very importantly, kidney support. So the chitosan starts early in the dog's life to bind the bad phosphates. And we have the ideal protein and fat ratio. And then again, beta-glucan is an immune stimulant as the dog is getting older. So again, a super premium formulation with some of these incredible additives, chitosan, which you find in almost no other super premium dog food at this really affordable price. Okay, so kidney and joint support in our senior dog food. And then we've got the, the ones for the, the, the um, smallies, basically our toy breeds, a mini adult and a mini senior. Um, and the same advantages that these are very specialized kibbles for these little dogs. They have a higher coating of the protein, um, digested protein, to give us extreme palatability. We haven't had a single case of bad referrals or bad, bad um, report backs on our mini adult and our mini senior. So lovely, fantastic dog food, again, at a really um, much better price than you'll be doing with the, with the imported products. Okay, so that is basically our maintenance range. And then we're extremely proud to announce that we launched five, six months ago, the first sensitive, local sensitive dog food in South Africa, specifically made for dogs with allergies. Um, this is a, a formulation that is very, very close to one of the script diets of the imported dog foods. Um, we based it on that. And we specifically looked at the diet and looked at the protein source, which is the main source of allergies in dogs. And we decided to use exclusively turkey, so not chicken. On, in the case of um, allergies, dogs that are allergic to chicken will not be allergic to turkey. So the chicken and turkey, uh, turkey is not just a big uh, uh, chicken. Uh, yeah, turkey is not just a big chicken. The protein analysis of a turkey meat is completely different to that of chicken. So the turkey is by far one of the very specific 
hypoallergenic type of protein. So we've included only turkey and we've got only rice in there. So we do not get the grain allergies that we often get in the other dog type of dog foods. Incredible product. We have had the most amazing success with this product over the last few months. And it really is worth your while if you do have a puppy, a dog, which is allergic to have a look at this as an alternative source of a, uh, of a, of a nutrition. So we're looking and we're saying we've got the same quality, but cheaper. And where is the catch? It's simply very, very simple. We're not a multinational company. We don't have a staff of five or 10,000 people. We take a far lower markup on our product. And we have this unique distribution model where we go exclusively through via veterinarians and where via veterinarians help us in the marketing of the product. So we don't need to do thousands and thousands of rands of marketing costs on television and on all manner of, of, of other publications. So very briefly, we'll fin finish off with the OptiVet. And this is our premium um, product um, offering. So this is the offering for the people that just cannot afford the super premium type of products of the Vets brands in our Vets brands range. And it compares extremely favorably with the other premium products in South Africa. Um, it's got the same type of um, um, ingredients list. We use again in this exclusively only um, chicken, chicken protein. And it's the most affordable premium um, food that you'll find at veterinarians today. So it's a very nice alternative if you really, really have a lot of dogs and you cannot afford to feed your dogs the super premium range of dog foods. Okay, so um, that's the background and the, the, the analysis of the OptiVet, and that is what the bag looks like then. And then lastly, the feather in our cap and the one that we are really extremely proud of and, and we're so excited about is our first real um, therapeutic diet. In other words, the diet that we have specifically for disease conditions in dogs. And I specifically elected to go to, with, with Reno Focus. So this diet is, has been made with, with a sole purpose of actually supporting dogs with kidney disease, early, mid-stage and late-stage kidney disease. And my own little dog just came down with kidney disease literally um, four, five, six weeks ago. Um, and we've put him onto this Reno Focus dog food with the most miraculous results. You just cannot believe the difference in, in this little dog of mine and the combination of the Reno Focus dog food specifically then with our nutraceutical offering, which we'll talk very briefly about. So the Reno Focus made with very, very specific um, proteins, low, quality, low um, percentage of protein, but extremely high value. And in the Reno focus, a major portion of the protein source is then eggs that we spoke about earlier. In this specific diet, we included it very specifically because we want the top, top, top quality protein that we can possibly give. Okay, so very proud of our Reno focus. And that will be, it is in the market already, but it will be more generally um, available in the next, next month or two. Um, so then I just want to spend three minutes. We're going to do a very specific nutraceutical lecture as well in the next few months. But I want to spend two or three minutes in saying that if you look at our high quality, super premium maintenance diet that we're offering, and you combine that high quality, super premium maintenance diet with our focus range of nutraceuticals. Um, so it's the Vets brand's focus range. It's called Cartley Focus, Condro Focus, Reno Focus. So for every ma ma major disease condition or um, disease um, uh, itself, we will then offer you a very specific nutraceutical, which has been on the market for a lot for, since 2012, and which is slowly but surely gaining ground. So more and more now, your brand ambassadors um, in the vet shops and your veterinarians will say to you, why don't you consider using adult maintenance along with cartly focus for a dog that's got a joint disease? Or why don't you consider using um, the senior dog food with um, cardio focus for the dogs that actually have heart disease? So we combine the normal dog food with a nutraceutical, and we then have a food that is made specifically for the dog with that specific disease condition. Mm -hmm. Yes, in a case like Reno Focus, Reno Focus, the renal diet, the, the through the diet itself becomes so paramount that we will then combine the diet of Reno Focus with the Reno Focus tablets or oils 
to give you the absolute ultimate therapeutic, natural therapeutic um, product to actually support the kidney health in, in dogs. And some of our other diets will follow, but we currently do then have the, the maintenance diets that you combine with, with the nutraceuticals to give you this very specific nutraceutical additional food to the maintenance diet itself then. Okay, so we've got local affordability. I want to make that very clear. We've got a reduced carbon footprint. We proudly South Africa. The other guys take these massive profits, which we don't do. And we've got really an incredible quality insurance in the sense that you as pet owner can actually purchase your vet's brand's dog food. If you were on one of the other super premium imported dog foods, and you're not perfectly happy after the first month of use of your dog food, the first bag, you can bring that bag of dog food back to your veterinary practice or your vet shop, and we will either refund your money or we will even go as far as buying you your original bag of dog food on our, at our expense. So it's not just a money back guarantee, it's we'll replace your um, dog food with the dog food that you were using before. Um, so an incredibly strong guarantee and quality assurance of our dog food then. So I hope that this 30, 40 minutes um, lecture that I've given you guys or talk that I've given you have given some insight into what a high quality dog food is, how you evaluate dog food to make you think about the fact that you may be dealing, you may be think, have to think about changing to a local affordable brand and um, to understand the vet's only concept then. Okay.